So we're going to talk about CBD today. And the interesting piece, I think, is that it isn't just for hippies anymore. And with the research that's been done in the last three decades, not a lot of it that's been done here, but been done everywhere, is really starting to show that there is really some potential for some medical benefit. So our endocannabinoid or uh, cannabinoid system has been pretty much drawn out and done and it's well this is a great audience and um, I think each one of you are experts and could be giving your own sort of discourse on the kinds of things that you see but I want to use as an example and you have all of my slides in fact you have enough slides for about a three-hour lecture I've trimmed that back so we're going to kind of go through the abbreviated version of this. But you have a lot more references in your disk that you can actually look at. So in my quest to understand autism, which is kind of the new of this generation, prototypical neurodevelopmental environmental catastrophe, one of the things that I've been attempting to do is to source out what is the button that gets pushed that changes everything. And the reality is, I really think that this pathway, the endocannabinoid system pathway. So what I hope to do in the next um, 45 minutes is to really review, obviously this is a hot topic currently, there's a lot of questions, I think a lot more questions than answers right now, debate, and what do we really do in the medical pharmacy community um, for the proper use of medical marijuana. So hopefully we can shed a little bit of light on um, this a little bit. So we're also just going to talk a little bit about, you know, the effects in the brain, you know, myth versus facts, you know, the interaction between the neuroendocrine system and the endocannabinoid systems, and the various clinical uses, at least, where we have some published data now um, regarding the proper use of this. So obviously, you know, now the term is medical marijuana. So I'm practicing in Boulder, Colorado, uh, originally from Connecticut, moved to Boulder, uh, and of course, Colorado is the epicenter of medical marijuana. Uh, as well as legal cannabis as well. So I have a lot of experience over the last six and a half years treating patients with cannabis. Initially, I was an OBGYN practicing uh, in Connecticut, Colorado. Moved to New Zealand, practiced there for two and a half years. And when I got back from New Zealand, I decided I'm getting too old for this. You know, after about 10,000 babies, it's, it wears you down. So I started looking at other avenues. What can I do? and accidentally uh, came upon medical marijuana when I took someone to a dispensary to be her support person to get cannabis for her fibromyalgia and her rheumatoid arthritis. And the next thing you know, they were offering me a job. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to speak to this audience. As a neurosurgeon, my associate Jeff Bost and I deal on a daily basis with patients with significant spinal pain from cervical and lumbar degenerative disc disease. We deal with patients with, with traumatic brain injuries, particularly post-concussion syndrome, and the, 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 terrible, the terrible syndrome that that occurs in patients who have multiple concussions, or even one concussion that's too bad. And uh, we, we deal with patients with significant anxiety in terms of surgery uh, and also associated with traumatic brain injury. What's going to happen to me? Am I going to develop chronic traumatic encephalopathy in a year or two years or five years? So I'm always, we're always looking for those products, those agents, those drugs, those procedures, whatever it is, to alleviate pain and anxiety in our patients. And Interestingly, uh, that brings us to Dr. Christopher Shade, who will be talking to us about creating a physiological stress resistance with a top-down, bottom-up combination of the neuroadaptogenic cannabinol, CBD, and traditional adap adrenoadaptogenic herbs. Did I get that right? Yeah, you did. Okay, I practiced that last night. <laughs> that was okay. Dr. Shade obtained his B.S. and M.S. degrees from Lehigh University, where I spent many a, an August afternoon watching the Philadelphia Eagles getting ready for a, another losing season, 56 years and, and, and running, in environmental and aqueous chemistry. 
Dr. Shade earned his PhD from the University of Illinois, where he studied the environmental and analytical chemistries of mercury, as well as advanced aquatic chemistry. During his PhD work, Dr. Shade patented analytical technology for mercury speciation analysis and later founded Quicksilver Scientific LLC in order to commercialize this technology. His current focus is at the intersection of neuroinflammatory issues, immune dysregulation, toxicity, and infection. Thank you very much for coming to hear my talk today. I know it's the end of a long uh, few days, so I appreciate you um, coming. And I'm a holistic dermatologist. I started out as a conventional dermatologist and got into alternative medicine, wrote the first integrative textbook on dermatology, and have been speaking here for years. Recently, I did get into t interested in to THC, cannabinoids, and even though this room is pretty empty now, in about two years, everybody will be into it because it's the next big thing. So I'm going to speak about the science behind hemp, cannabinoids, and THC for beauty and skin problems, as well as psoriasis, eczema, acne, seborrhea, and even melanoma. There are studies on this. First of all, let's look at what cannabinoids are. They can come from medical marijuana plants or from industrially grown hemp plants. Both are varieties of cannabis, sativa, but they're grown for very different purposes. And each one comes with its own legal status, as you know. Um, things are changing very rapidly on a federal